I created this mechanics with control rig some time ago and I thought let's try to rebuild this with scene graph. So here we are with the prefab in front of us <laughs> and it works guys. It is super smooth as well. It's so nice. And the cool part is of all of this is that it's modular and component based. This means if I want to duplicate this car, I can do that. With the old way, if I wanted to duplicate the car, I'm trying it here, I would have to duplicate all the switches and all the other parts to make it work and I had to bind it. But with uh, scene graph and prefabs, I can just duplicate the whole thing and because it's component based, it works on every copy basically. So good, <laughs> man. And it is smooth. It is nice, guys. And uh, if you enjoyed this, then keep watching because I'm going a little bit deeper into the different approaches, especially scene graph and how I set it up. But look at this, guys. This is the old way. Like for every part, a switch for opening and closing. Yeah, so I'm starting off with a skeletal mesh, like an empty skeletal mesh here. With all the parts, the bones for it to rotate on. And uh, it ro rotate based on that position. So here we've got the attachment part. Uh, control rig was the main thing here to make it go smooth. So this is the first file and on switch, I was subscribing to the switch. And whenever it opened up, I was moving the door teleport to an open position and the control rig would smooth that out. So that is the first code here. So totally different approach. Um, fine for one car, but if I want, for example, this car to duplicate it doesn't work the same way. I need to add all of these things for the second car. So that is the cool thing about scene graph is that you set it up once and then you can start moving things around and it would work because it's component based or entity based. Okay, so in a scene graph situation, we have the prefab here. You can see the body entity and every moving part is a separate entity. And as a child of that, I have a button, which is also an entity. And the uh, button entity has a, a static mesh component and an interactable component. On top of that, every button has this car interaction component, which is a first file with the code. So, this is the car interaction component with uh, some editables, movement parts, so I know which side it is. And I'm using that to rotate different um, axes and the amount it opens up and the duration. So when I go back to the prefab here, uh, I can set these settings. So for example, the front, the right door, I want this to, to be right and the hood, I want it to be um, the, the hood. <clears throat> Other things I'm checking here, some variables, if it's open or closing and if it's moving. Because when it's moving, I don't want to spam the interact button. I just want to wait. Uh, if it's done moving, I can do it again. So I'm subscribing to the interact event. Or it's called succeeded event here. And only if moving is false, I'm actually moving the part. I also want the door entity and I, I'm getting it by this function. It's get parent of the current entity. This means the button entity. I want to get the parent. And from the parent, I want to get the keyframe movement component. And here is the button uh, entity. And one uh, level above that is the hood um, entity which consists of the uh, uh, static mesh and the keyframe movement component. Um, <clears throat> so by doing it this way I can 
go back up one level and get that entity. Saving the uh, keyframe movement component as an option uh, to use it uh, later. So once again, when the uh, uh, when I'm interacting with the button, I'm initializing the movement. So based on, on the case, I'm sending different axes, different uh, axes to rotate on because the hood, for example, rotates on a different axis than a door. And also the left door and the right door are different. So in this way I can keep it compact. And also um, the decrease is dependent on if it's going to open or close. And if it's opening up, it's for example 45 degrees, but if it's closing, then I want minus 45 degrees. So with this function, set the direction, I get it right degrees. Because if it's open, if open is true, so if it's already open, I want a negative value. If else, I just want to have the normal. Okay, so I'm playing it here. And I'm also immediately awaiting a finished event. So when it's done playing, I'm saying it's moving to false so I can click on the button again. This is so cool guys because for example I, if I have one car here uh, if I want another car and another one let's see if I need to build this no I can just do it. So we got three cars now and it should should all work because it's component based it's, it's just local on that entity so that's it i'll see you in the next video